Sidewalks collapsed, storefronts trashed, and cars underwater. This was Ellicott City one year ago. You know, can't keep this good town down. Here we are. You Residents guys. and business owners rose to the occasion, rebuilding after water rushed through city streets, destroying homes and shops. 365 days later, this, streets filled with people and businesses ready for customers. We do celebrate the fact that over 90% of the businesses have come back. To mark the occasion, city leaders unveiled a brand new clock at the end of Main Street. Pieces of the old clock destroyed in the flood are now on display at the Ellicott City Museum. This was a significant event in so many different ways. It did damage, physical damage to our town, but it, it, it did some uh, damage to, to some families as well. Three families lost loved ones. Joseph Belvins and Jessica Watsula were swept away by floodwaters. She was so precious, so bubbly, so full of life and a beautiful, beautiful person. Business owner John Pazalowski died after falling from scaffolding shortly after the flood. He was honored to be part of the community and devastated when the flood hit. We know that he would be proud to see how it has rebounded. Blossoms of Hope dedicated trees in their honor. It's a special time for Ellicott City because we want those families to know we'll never forget their loved ones. Uh, they're a part of Ellicott City forever. And, and we, we love them and we want them to know that we're here to help them any way we can. The city has come a long way, but there's still more work to be done. The Boy Scouts hosted their second annual 5K to assist with future improvements. Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts raised about $9,000 total to go towards Ellicott City Partnership to help with the flood recovery from last year. Last week, officials announced four major flood mitigation projects costing $18 million in federal, state, and local funds. We're live tonight from Ellicott City. Vanessa Herring, WBAL-TV 11 News. All right,